and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. This is episode two of the Sweet and Low Build. In this episode, I'm going to cover a few gluing tips on the project and my engine choice and joining the fuselage sides together and squaring it up. So let's get started. Now, where I left off on the previous uh, video was gluing the doublers onto the fuselage sides. And um, I thought I'd mention it again, particularly if you're a brand new uh, builder, uh, you know, with regards to building balsa airplanes, is the, I had one of the viewers ask the question, can you use alphatic glue to glue a doubler, particularly, you know, this is a big one, onto, you know, like a fuselage side. So alphatic glue, again, of course, would be like a carpenter's glue, whether it's Titebond or LePage's, there's many brands. This type of glue needs air to dry. So I don't recommend using any kind of alphatic glue for a doubler. Now the reason being is it needs air to dry. So when you spread the glue here, it starts to dry from the outside and it works its way in. And who even knows if it ever really dries in the middle. So what happens is because of the uneven drying, there's a very good chance it's going to warp whatever piece you've glued it on. So what I highly recommend is you can either use contact cement. Just bear in mind that if you use contact cement, which is a, it's a chemical instant bond, you basically have one shot to put this doubler on. You're not going to have the opportunity to line it up. So particularly if it's a big piece, um, it can be kind of tricky. Smaller pieces are, you know, more manageable. So what I use, and you could use different time sets, but I use 30-minute epoxy. You could use 15 or 20. Uh, but I use 30-minute epoxy once because of the tremendous strength and the fact that, it, you know, having a half an hour, I got plenty of time to line this up and then put weights on it and uh, then just let it dry overnight and you're good to go the next day. And... Because it's a chemical bonding, it just entirely bonds pretty much at the same time. And, you know, this is virtually perfectly straight. There's, I've never had a piece warp uh, when I use epoxy or even contact cement. So uh, if you're new, do watch my uh, video on glue. You may find it helpful. So that was done. And since then, too, I've glued the firewall on with 30 minute epoxy. And one thing I like about this kit, and, and I've done this many times before, is you may notice that the inside piece is actually recessed. So when the side one, which has this reset here, it keys right into that. Okay. So it's not a question of just gluing the firewall right onto the, uh, fuselage side. I really don't like those kind of joints. The fact that this is keyed and then it fits in makes for a much better joint. Now the other thing I want to mention since I'm talking about gluing is you may notice these glue joints, there is no visible glue on the outside. And of course when you're gluing it on, invariably glue will squeeze out and in this particular case, it was important to wipe the glue away. Now, it was epoxy, so you could use uh, wet paper towel works, uh, or you could use even a bit of uh, denatured alcohol on the paper towel, but wipe it clean. The reason for that is we're going to strengthen these bulkheads up with triangular stock, so it's like a, a gazette, and we're going to place it here, and you notice because there's no glue in that joint, it fits perfectly tight in there, giving you the maximum strength benefit of using the triangular stock. Of course, there may be a time where you miss that and you do get some glue out there. If you can't remove the glue, uh, what you can do, it's sort of cheating a little bit, but if you were to then eliminate this corner by sanding it away to the point that the glue is underneath that, then you'll be able to get it to butt closer to the firewall and fuselage side. But ideally, 
wipe the glue away. It takes only a few seconds, and then you'll get a really nice custom fit. So something to bear in mind when you're putting it together. Also, I've glued on, uh, this happens to be quarter inch, five ply plywood, and this is where the wing leading edge attachment, in other words, the dowel, it's going to fit in here. And that's part of the wing mounting system. So that was glued in. So what I need to do is, uh, uh, the next steps is I've got to put some quarter inch stringers on. And, um, you know, then I'll be looking soon to glue the other fuselage side on. And by the way, when you glue doublers on, make sure you orientate it properly, see? You'll notice that they're both not the same way. In other words, if you lay these down and you put them both the same way and you put a doubler here and then you put a doubler there, when it's time to assemble it, they won't end up on the inside. So in essence, one side has to be orientated this way and the other one basically looks upside down, but that's the way you put the doublers on. The reason I know that, because I've done that mistake. So um, another thing I, I wanna mention is what engine am I going to use on this project? On the previous video, I wasn't really sure which engine to use, uh, but I've decided, you know, the other sweet and low, the red and white one, it has a Moki 180 on, uh, and it flies very nice with it. They're very powerful engines. Uh, even though the airplane, it is uh, designed around a 35cc gas engine, it would be just fine. And, um, you know, I was going to put one on, but I decided to go with a glow engine again. And this is a Moki 210. So it's more powerful than the 180. Uh, puts out pretty much close to five horsepower. Tremendous torque, very smooth running. I have a couple 180s and um, they're easy to start engines. They're uh, highly engineered. Uh, Moki uh, engines are made in Hungary out of Budapest. They've been around a long time. They have an excellent reputation for their quality and performance. And uh, so I'm going to go this route. Now, typical glow engines, it has flanges here uh, to mount the engine. But what I've, uh, you can get it as an option, is a radial mount. And basically this back plate comes off and this fits in there. And uh, what I like about a radial mount, and I use them with all my Moki installations, is that as you attach it to the firewall, I like it because all the stresses on the firewall are distributed in this circular fashion, this cone shape, uh, instead of any other type of engine mount. So I really like it for that. So I'm going to be installing blind nuts on the back, and then it gets bolted on, you know, of course, with the attached to the engine, and it makes for very easy removal. And um, now this particular base is off a of 180. Uh, I have ordered, actually from Hungary, um, the one that is applicable for the 210. So I'm gonna have to wait for that to show up. Uh, they're actually very good for sending parts. So once I get that part, then I'll be able to uh, precisely mount it. And uh, by the way, uh, not to confuse these Moki engines with the Moki radials, which come out of Germany, and these come out of Hungary, and they're two different entities. Uh, but anyways, I absolutely love these engines for their uh, power to weight ratio. As a matter of fact, if, if you were to put this head to head with a gas engine, you would need a 50cc gas engine to compete with the torque and power of this engine. Okay, so I'm going to proceed with the next steps. As I mentioned uh, earlier on in the previous episode, make sure you follow the instructions so you don't get yourself into a tight situation. So the fuselage is starting to look more like a fuselage. And just before I joined the sides together, I glued on a quarter inch square uh, stringer here, both the top and the bottom, both sides. And then also uh, the tail section has stab doublers installed. 
once that was done on both sides, then I made sure that the fuselage is sitting on top of the plans in the correct position. I start off by using my firewall as the datum and then double check that the bulkheads are appropriately lined up. Now, just before I go squaring it and making sure they're perfectly vertical, because this is basically a box style fuselage, so it's pretty straightforward. It's important that the airplane is leveled properly. So, you know, you put the level on it and then double check that the airplane is level in both directions. Now, you can just go ahead and start propping and shimming the fuselage to get it level. But quite frankly, you know, just like I stress that your work surface has to be perfectly flat, so whatever you're building is true, it's to your advantage if your table is perfectly level this way and level this way. That way, you got a good starting platform. As you put the fuselage on there, you have to do really minimal shimming, and then it's very easy to ensure that the fuselage is perfectly level. Now, when you go to square everything up, everything will be perfectly accurate. So you check for 90 degrees here. And when you check, not only do you check the top, but go down to the bottom and double check there as well. Take your big square, go around and check all the bulkheads. Because if the fuselage is not properly leveled, say the fuselage was slightly off, then if you go, even if you go to square your bulkhead, but if the fuselage is off, the bulkheads won't be properly aligned. So that's very important. Then, of course, you can use your trusty ruler. Always good to go around and double check everything. So, you know, you go from one side, check the measurement, go to the other, and just check for accuracy. Now, I use 30-minute epoxy to glue these in. And again, the nice thing about 30-minute epoxy, of course, is its strength, but it does give me time to go around if I have to make any small alignment adjustments. When I'm happy with all that, then you gently clamp everything appropriately that it all comes together. So we're going to have to let this cure overnight, and then we'll go on with the next steps according to the instructions. If you like the video, please select like and subscribe. I always welcome comments or questions. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.